Brothers and sisters, our time of confession and assurance and our time of preparation are together this morning, uh, preparation for the Lord's Supper. And as part of that preparation uh, and our time of confession, we're going to read from John chapter 13, verses 31 to 36. And this is during the Last Supper that Jesus has with his disciples. Um, just before his crucifixion. And so we had just read uh, just before this that Judas uh, left to go and, uh, yeah, prepare his betrayal of Jesus um, to get himself uh, and whatever he needed ready for that. And so this is what happens after that. When Judas was gone, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, this is what Jesus teaches us, that that there is hope for tomorrow, yes, that there is hope for tomorrow where Jesus is going that we cannot follow is to heaven, to be with his Lord, to, or to be with his Father in heaven, to, to be there seated at the right hand of God the Father, to be preparing a place for us. And that is so good. But Jesus also teaches us that we need to love one another. Jesus teaches us that love of the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength is the greatest commandment. And that loving our neighbor as ourselves is like it and with it. They're one commandment, right? Not only that, but Jesus teaches us That love is the way by which all people will know that we are his disciples. And Jesus exemplified this during his Last Supper by kneeling down and washing his disciples' feet. Brothers and sisters, the Lord's Supper is and was called for many years in the early church, a love feast. Because love is so key to what has happened in the crucifixion. God shows us his love by being willing to give up his only son for us. Jesus shows us his love by being willing to give up himself for us. God demonstrates his love for us by saying, look how far I would go for you. Look to what lengths I would go for you. And God shows us how to love one another ultimately by being willing to sacrifice ourselves even for one another, even for our enemies, should the need arise. And so as we prepare for communion, let us examine ourselves and ask ourselves whether we are living in the way 
of love. Perhaps there is someone in particular that you have not loved recently. Or perhaps it is yourself that you are not loving. Or perhaps you are not loving God. No doubt in all of these ways, you, like me, are not loving perfectly. But remember, too, as you come to God and as you confess your lack of love or your imperfect love, remember that there is grace for you. There is grace for me. There is grace for everyone who comes and will receive it. Brothers and sisters, let us pray. Father in heaven, both today and throughout this week, please prepare our hearts to celebrate the love feast, the Lord's Supper, communion with you and with each other next week. May we do so, O oh God, by examining our hearts. May your spirit open us up so that we may know and see how we are loving and how we are not loving, how we are trying but failing, how we are trying and through your power succeeding. Lord, help us confess our sins our lack of love for you or for our neighbor or for ourselves. And help us repent and turn and go in your way. Father, we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.